Good morning, and welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am your host, Bill Kennison, live from beautiful, sunny Southern California. It's beautiful out here today. It's going to be like 95, Sherry. Well, going to be 95 degrees out here today, but I guess it's also going to be warm throughout the country, so uh, anyhow, I want to bring blessings to you. As you know, if you watched last week, we are missing our beautiful signer, Susie Phillips. They are moving to Oregon, I believe, and uh, you know, we have she has sat next to me and done this for two years. And so I want to wish her the very best, her and her family that have, uh, her wonderful husband, Mark, that has, and their daughter, Taylor, that has given her up on Sunday mornings to uh, be here with me. And I'm sure they're going to watch, they're watching this morning, and I just want to wish them the very, very, very best. And uh, she'll be back Whenever she comes back to Southern California, she'll be here with us. But we want to welcome you to a tremendous uh, lesson today. And uh, this lesson is about true prosperity, and I'm not even asking for money. So you really want to listen today. I'm going to tell you how to be prosperous. You realize that, uh, I hope you realize that you have been drawn to this message and this lesson by divine appointment this morning. You are here by divine appointment. So it is just could be that this is the lesson whose time has come for your life. I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that you that's watching this morning, I believe that you're supposed to be watching this. And I believe this is for you Right now, right now, this may be one of the most important lessons you're ever going to receive from me. Because uh, I, you know, I look around and, and, and you know, people have financial pressures. And uh, I actually have a lot of friends that, that play the lottery. And, uh, and they're praying and everything else, trying to get God to let them win the lottery. I remember, and, and Sherry probably does too, we were pastoring in Rockford, Illinois. We actually had a family, and this was back in the 70s when the lottery just started, and we had a family in our church that took their entire paycheck and was sure that each week they were going to win the lottery. And they'd already had planned out and charted what they were going to do with this money that they were going to win and everything else it doesn't come it doesn't come like that matter of fact if you watch uh tv very much you'll see uh, there's a program that comes up every once in a while called the curse of the lottery and it's people that have won the lottery and some of them ended up in jail most of them ended up broke and it was just amazing that they they win this money, but because the foundation isn't set right, and because they don't have that foundation, they just go right through it, and they end up worse than, than if they'd uh, never had won it. I want to, I want to, I want to, there's a few things, and I'm going to stop every once in a while, and I go, I want you to really hear this. I want you to really hear this. You were born to be rich or to grow rich by the use of your faculties. I want to repeat that. You were born to be rich or to get rich by the use of your faculties, your talents, whatever it was. But God made you to be rich, to be prosperous, to be healthy, to be to have peace in your in your marriage and in your life. That's what God made you for. And and if you're not having that, you really want to you really want to listen to us today. You see, if you're not enjoying those things, one of the problems may be that you're hung up on the age-old confusion that godliness comes with poverty. 
that the poorer you are, the more spiritual and godly you are. I was raised in, as many of you, well, I imagine all of you know now, because I remind you enough times, but I was born in a, a Pentecostal pastor's home. And uh, Pentecostal people, for whatever reason, they were known to be poor, at least back then. We were just, they were poor people. They did not have money. They, they worked and they would work hard and they struggled and, but it was reflected their poverty and their situations they were going through was reflected even in their testimonies. I remember uh, that they, they would get up and testify and ask you to pray that they could hold on to the end. That's not overcoming, folks. That is not overcoming, asking asking people to, to pray that you could hold on to the end. But it had even worked its way into what is supposed to be a testimony, and it had worked its way in there so much that that was their life. That was their, their life. You see, lack and limitations of any kind are not normal. They're aberrations. Somebody said, well, look at the world. Look how many people are having a hard time. You're here this morning. God is wanting to enlighten you this morning. He's wanting to turn on the light bulb. He wants to disperse the darkness. He wants you to see that you were made to be prosperous. And this isn't some, you know, name it, claim it, believe it, say it, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to give you the, the, the scriptures, I'm just, but I am going to lay it out as plainly as I come. If you've got lack and limitation, that is not normal in the eyes of God. That's an aberration. That's an aberration. It's not supposed to be that way. But you're the only ones that can, can block and, and tie the hands of God. Charles Fillmore great writer and speaker years and years and years and years ago, shocked the religious establishment one time when he said, it is a sin to be poor. Somebody asked me, oh, a couple weeks ago that ran into me and said, you know, I thought, I thought you're Christian. I said, well, I, I am Christian. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I believe I'm a child of the king, I'm a son of God. Now go, why? He said, well, you quote, you quote everybody from any religion, any position in life, you quote them. Well, I quote them because I think that everyone has a seed of truth. I think every, every religion has a seed of truth. But Charles Fillmore, and I especially like his writings, I've, I've got many many books that he's written, but I'll never forget in the one he said, it is a sin to be poor. Now, he wasn't referring to uh, moral turpitude. What he was referring to was the frustration of potentiality. That's why he said it's a sin to be poor because you're not recognizing the potential that you have, that you're frustrating that potential. You see, when we establish ourselves in the consciousness of God or in the mind of God or getting the mind of God in you, when we establish ourselves in that consciousness, the whole universe moves to flow into us with its abundance of life and substance. Doesn't that sound great? You have the entire universe. You have God that is waiting to give you the desires of your heart. He desires that, that you never experience lack. You never experience limitation. You never experience bondage. You never experience uh, disease and sickness. He's waiting. He's given us the tools, and that's what we're going to. That's what we're going to teach on this morning. 
I feel good. I feel great uh, giving you this message. You see, Matthew 6 and 33 says this, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those things shall be yours as well. Seek first. Now, I know, I know, I know some of you are already thinking, well, he's going to make an altar call and he's going to try to get me saved. And once I, once I get saved, then he'll say, you know, that's how you're going to be prosperous. No, no, that's, that's not what, that's not what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and righteousness is just right doings. So seek first his kingdom and his right doings, and all these things shall be yours as well. This is what Jesus had in mind when he said that, was exactly what we're talking about. You see, the belief is all too common that financial limitations is simply a quirk of bad luck. If you ever go to the horse races or you go to Vegas and people losing their money and and they'll tell you I've been I've been down on my luck lately. I've been down on my luck. Excuse me. The luck has nothing to do with it. Not what I'm talking about. Has nothing to do about, do with it. You see the average person may hope for better things, and he may even try to change his luck by playing the lottery or, or gambling on the horses or, or gambling in Las Vegas. He may also fantasize about happy and abundant living, but he will make no attempt to be other than what he believes himself to be. And financial... Limitation is part of what he believes himself to be. In other words, his family was poor. He's going to be poor. Uh, that's the average person. But yet they, they, they want to change their luck, so to speak. They want to change that, that luck. But it's been so ingrained in them and their their fantasies is to is to have better things, but it's it's been so ingrained in them that they believe they're a certain kind of person, and that's what comes with that kind of person. You see, to get the most from this lesson that I'm teaching you today, you will want to declare your independence from the belief that your personal welfare is completely tied to the fluctuations of the world out there. You need to get rid of that right out of the gate. Just totally uh, declare your independence that whatever goes on in what we call out there or in the world is affecting you and to establish yourself in the conviction that the free flow of prosperity can only be damned up from within you, not on the outside, within you, and that no one can keep your good from you but you. Woo! Starting to feel good now. Now I'm starting to feel Pentecostal. But no one, no one can stop Bill Kennison from being uh, prosperous except Bill Kennison. A lot of people even blame God because they don't have the things that they want to have in life. Let me give you a, a few meanings of, of words here. The word affluence is a word that usually implies cars, houses, jewelry, those kind of things. But its literal meaning is free flow. Free flow. And that has nothing to do with things at all. The word affluent, because we hear, you know, affluent people and, and they live in mansions and whatever. You see, prosperity is not just having things. 
That's our first thing, one of the first things we have to understand. It's not a matter of having things. It is the thinking and consciousness that attracts the things to you. I hope you're following this. I know that um, it's a little heavy, but it's good for you. A gentleman named John Ruskin said this, and I'm going to read it to you. What right have you to take the word wealth, which originally meant well-being, and degrade and narrow it by confining it to a certain sorts of material objects measured by money? Let me, repeat, let me read that again. That was John Ruskin. What right have you to take the word wealth, which originally meant well-being, and degrade and narrow it by confining it to a certain sorts of material objects measured by money? The word prosperity, because we're talking about prosperity this morning, and we're talking about being prosperous. The word prosperity comes from the Latin root which literally translates according to hope or to go forward hopefully. That's prosperity. So it's not so much a condition in life as it is an attitude toward life. Are you understanding that? So prosperity is not a matter of things just in life. It's your attitude about life. Prosperity. Let me, let me, if you want to write this down, this is good for you. Prosperity is a way of living and thinking. Not just money or things. Prosperity is a way of living and thinking, not just money or things. Poverty is a way of living and thinking and not just a lack of money and things. So you see, the, it's the same principle for both, prosperity and poverty. Prosperity is spiritual well-being. It's all going to come together here in just a moment. Believe me, hang with me. You see, this involves the whole experience of, of healing life, satisfying love, abiding peace, having a harmony. That's what prosperity is all about. It is our thinking and our consciousness that sets all the limits in life. No one else does that to us. We do it with our thinking and with our consciousness. Now you can pick yourself up. Let me interject some personal notes here at, the, at this point. I, I uh, One of the first memories I have in life is where we lived in Peoria, Illinois. We lived in a place called Harrison Homes. And that was the projects, the same projects that uh, Richard Pryor grew up in. And, and we grew up there. We lived there. Not only that, many of my relatives, I don't know if they appreciate me saying this, but they lived there. And what the projects were is if you didn't have enough money to pay like regular rent, they actually charged you by how much money you made. And so it was full of people that were that had lack and had limitation, that did not have money, that you would classify poor. That's how, that's how I grew up. And then we moved up. We moved up and we lived in the church that my parents pastored. There in East Peoria, Illinois, we lived in that church. I lived there until I married Sherry. That's when I moved out at 23 years old. I lived in that church building. We would go downstairs and have service, but we lived. We lived in it. Prosperity, and the amazing thing is, and I'm going to just forget that, that prosperity word right there for a moment. I told Sherry the other day, we were eating lunch, and we were talking about situations, and I told her, I said, you know, kids are resilient. 
I never realized until I was married and, and doing well in life, I never realized how rough I had it as a child. I never realized uh, when I was wearing pajama tops to school and kids would make fun of me. I never, I never realized that we were that bad off. Then when I got older, I looked back. Kids are, children are resilient. But you know what my parents did to us? They never, ever let us think that we were poor. They never let us think that. No, my, they, probably had, they probably had times where they had trouble trying to feed all four of us boys. But they never made us think. And we never walked around thinking we were poor. Somehow they had ingrained in each one of our minds that, that we were prosperous. And again, go back to what prosperity really means. It's not money or things. It's, an, it's a way of living and thinking. And I want you to think about those four children. Sam Kennison grew up in the same situations that I did. He ended up being one of the greatest stand-up comedians of all time. My brother Richard was, was, was a, a special needs child. He was born handicapped. He was born legally blind and severely mentally handicapped. But because of how our parents raised us, he ended up being very successful in life. God gave him a miracle at the age of 13 and he ended up being the, one of the he ended up being the very best evangelist I had ever I had ever seen. My brother Kevin, uh, he ended up modeling for for Barbizon and and playing drums for some of the biggest bands. And then myself, uh God God has blessed us to where we've stood on the stage and received a Grammy. We've wrote a best-selling book. I'm not trying to to lay all this out here to make you, uh, to try to show you how great I am or anything. What I'm trying to show you is our parents laid that, that foundation. And what you need to do today for you and your children is to renew that foundation and start realizing it starts in you. The thinking and the consciousness starts in you. Man, this is... This is good stuff. I wish I had Susie here to just turn around and go, this is good stuff. You see, it's our thinking and our consciousness that sets all the limits in our life. It's not, it's not other people. It's not your job. It's not President Trump. It's not the government. It's you that puts limits in your life. You're having a hard time today. You can change that today. You can change it today, but it's going to take a change in your consciousness and in your in your thinking. We have we have been erroneously conditioned to believe that our lives are completely shaped by what happens around us and to us. Life is lived from within out, not the other way around, not from the outside and affecting me within. No, no, no. Life is lived from within and then to the out. It's not what happens out there, but what we do or think about what happens. That's 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 where the the power is. I remember my father told me many, many, many times, it's not what happens to you that makes the difference. It's how you react to it. And I have thought of that so many times when I felt like someone has, has taken advantage of me or uh, has put me in a bad situation, then I'm going, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not what happens to me. It's how I react to it. That makes the results, and I want I want the best results. You see, the starting point in 
realizing prosperity is to accept responsibility for your own thoughts. And by doing that, you're taking charge of your life. Refuse, absolutely refuse to indulge in casual conversation about the economy or the high cost of living or about anything that, that you really don't want to say yes to, then you know what? Don't indulge it. I remember when, when Sherry uh, was going through her situation with breast cancer and uh, God gave us some of the best doctors and they did a fantastic job and they saved her life and, and uh, they cured her. But when she was diagnosed, all of a sudden, people just started coming out of the woodwork. People that had never told me that their wife had had breast cancer or they went through this or they went through that. But I noticed that just about, well, most if not all of the stories ended up bad. My wife had breast cancer and she died. My wife had had breast cancer and, and the radiation killed her. And they, it got to the point that after just a, a week or two, when someone started telling me a story, I go, wait a minute, is this going to end well? If the story's not going to end well, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. All I want is victorious statements. All I want is people that have had cancer or breast cancer or whatever that have beat it. They, I want to talk to them. I don't want to talk to, to you that, that has a bad story. So don't indulge yourself into those negative things. Don't fill your mind with that. Don't fill your consciousness with that. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you also. And his mind never saw a limitation. It never saw a roadblock. It never seen anything that stopped. Eliminate all those thoughts as much as you, as you can. It comes down to your thinking. Talk about only the things you want to see, live, and grow in. That's what you want to talk about. You want to be successful? Be around successful people. Before we were years and years and years ago, although it doesn't seem that long ago, but it was. Uh, I used to, I, was, uh, I worked for a company, Dare to Be Great. And uh, I was a motivational speaker and success speaker. And they would pay me to, to come in for a, a half day, a four hour seminar into what they call white collar uh, jobs. So I would do everything from office buildings to uh, car lots. And I would motivate, try to motivate uh, these people. And one of the things that, that I used to tell them to do is if you're in financial need, if you think you, you, know, you don't know where, go and sit at the bank. Of course, now today they may, they may arrest you. But go sit at the bank and watch people bringing their money in and, and giving it to them. Watch people come and get money and walk out. And you'll start getting a consciousness there's money all around there's money all around, and you got to remember what I started this lesson on today. And that is that God created you to be rich or to get rich with your abilities and your faculties. You see, God will make you prosperous and successful in all your way if you don't make it too hard for him. You're the only one that can stop him. You're the only one that can limit him. He will give you everything that he has if you're willing to accept it. You see, God will put 
ideas in your mind. He'll put words into your mouth. Creativity into your hands. Opportunities before you. And a guiding light on the way of how you should do it. All that is required is as Thoreau would say, keep moving in the direction of your dreams. What is your desires? What is your dreams? Keep moving in that direction. Most of us have grown up under the influence of religions. And, uh, and that's, that hasn't been a good influence. You see, most of us have dealt with uh, many parts of religion. You that haven't, you're, you're fortunate. Oh, man, I looked at that clock, and it says I got to get out of here, and I'm just getting warmed up. We're going to pick this up uh, next week. Uh, we want to pray for a few folks, and we want to we want to become uh, joined with them. The, the power is inside of them. We just want to. Matter of fact, the Scripture says if any two will agree on a thing, it shall be done. I want to agree uh, with the Petulos and the Barkers uh, and the Wileys in Hawaii with all these, this earthquake and this, this uh, volcanoes that's, that's going on. We want to agree uh, with them. We want to agree with Gigi and her husband. We want, I want to agree. You know what? I just want to agree with you. What do you want? What do you want in life? Because I want to agree with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your knowledge and for your teaching that you give us. I ask that you cause uh, these principles uh, to become a part of our everyday life and cause every person that's watching me, I ask that you make them prosperous. Make them rich like you wanted them to be. Make them healthy. Bring peace to their life. We'll give you all the praise. Amen. We're going to be here next Sunday. I'm going to finish this up uh, next Sunday. This is a tremendous lesson. God love you. We'll see you next week.